What's going on everyone? Trust the Buzz here if you're new to the channel. I make daily Charlotte Hornets content, so if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, in this game, basically I'm just going to give a recap of the great game that the Charlotte Hornets had against the Atlanta Hawks. Um, if you are, you know, subscribed to the channel already, I didn't get to last game. If you can't tell by the sound of my voice, I'm actually pretty sick. Um, so I was actually debating whether or not I should do this video. That's kind of why the camera's not on or anything like that. Uh, don't want y'all to see my ugly face. Um, I got some tea right here, so we're going to power through this. Uh, so just forgive me for not putting out last video, not doing more videos. But yeah, of course, I would get sick at the beginning of the season. But I could not miss this this game. I, I could not miss not doing this game. So it's not going to be long because I might run out of breath and my chest might start hurting. But and I'm and I'm fine. It's just a little cold. But anyway. Let's talk about this amazing game. So it started off rough. Um, so as you can tell right here, I mean, this the first quarter right here, it doesn't do it justice. I think at one point it was like 26 to 9 or something like that. So in the first quarter, 30 to 22 isn't bad, especially considering uh, Terry Rozier, LaMelo Ball, and Cody Martin are all out. Um, in the end, this is a road game. But the Charlotte Hornets get their revenge by winning 126 to 109. So... Gordon Hayward didn't play. So if I told you Gordon Hayward didn't play well, if I told you Kelly Oubre at first he was not playing well, um, and I told you Dennis Smith Jr. was our starting point guard going into um, the third game of the season playing against the Atlanta Hawks, you you would be like, oh, well, you know, like for me, like my biggest thing with this team is effort. So be like, well, if they go in and play with effort and they lose, fine. But if I told you they won because – of a Nick Richards double double where he was perfect from the field, um, and he only missed one free throw, but he had a twenty and eleven game with two blocks. Like that, that would have been insane. But that, that is part of the reason. So it is great to see without Terry Rozier, without Lamelo Ball, without Cody Martin, and Gordon Hayward not playing all that well. And like I said, Kelly Oubre at the beginning was not playing all that great. The fact that the Charlotte Hornets won this game and were able to keep the Atlanta Hawks from just killing every three. I mean, John Collins 0 for 7, so you wouldn't expect that to happen often. Not him going 0 for 7, but more so him taking seven threes. But the threes were not just wide open. You know, the, the Charlotte Hornets do a good job now rotating and just getting to the open guy. Granted, there were some open threes, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just you just want to see this team rotate and just kind of close out. And they were doing that, and it made it difficult for the Atlanta Hawks to get their three points off. And that's what this team is going to live and die by, especially with a guy like Trey Young, especially with a guy like DeAndre Hunter, who was one for five from three. Um, Justin Holiday as well, one for five from three, like another guy who relies on the three point shot. So the Charlotte Hornets were doing their thing. And I said on Twitter, uh, follow me. I'll put the link down in the description below uh, at Trust Buzz on Twitter, where I just basically talk about the Charlotte Hornets and just kind of sometimes I post clips and stuff there, too. Anyway, because uh, it's hard to post clips on YouTube without the video getting taken down or flagged or whatever. But anyway, I said on Twitter that Steve Clifford. And, and I'm kind of joking here, but Steve Clifford definitely should be like in contention for coach of the year already because the way he has these guys playing is night and day from having the way James Borrego had these guys playing. Steve Clifford was able to get valuable minutes out of Theo Maladon, who was just cut from the Houston Rockets like two weeks ago. And granted, this guy's on a two way. And sorry for the sniffling, but. Theo Maldon, I know it says four and four, but the way he just navigates on offense, the way he just carries himself on, I mean, it's like almost, it kind of feels like it's in slow motion, but it's really just him not being rushed and him just having all the basketball IQ in the world. I really appreciated what Theo Maldon was doing on the court. JT Thor provided some really good minutes because, uh, Jalen McDaniels got in foul trouble a little early, and JT Thor was able to what, what six rebounds and five five points, one block and one turnover. But it is what it is. But I, he provided some good minutes considering that Jalen McDaniels those are kind of his minutes to have, you know. And he, since he was in foul trouble, JT Thor did a good job just coming off fresh, you know. Um, James Booknight had a better game. He looked better. He did. I mean, he shot okay. But I mean, this is good considering what we've gotten from James Booknight in the past. But it is what it is. I'm 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 happy with it. You know, plus twenty. Uh, he did he did foul a lot, which that's part of like 
that's that's something where it's like, okay, he's growing, he's learning, uh, fouls, turnovers, things like that. But him just looking uncomfortable, that's what you don't want. But fouls, turnovers, bad shots, that's whatever. Him just not looking comfortable though, that that is where you know it kind of gets scary. But he looked better this game. But now let's talk about the real stars. Like I said. So, PJ watching him, he kind of did his thing. I mean, he was a little bit in a foul trouble, too. That's why he only played, like, 22 minutes. And he just wasn't popping off on the screen. Um, but guys, like like I said, Nick Richards popping off the screen. Uh, he only got two blocks, but he altered a lot of shots at the rim. 11 rebounds. Uh, uh, and, and one thing I mentioned in uh, my last video where I was talking about the game against the Spurs, that a lot of those were offensive rebounds. I think he had eight offensive rebounds that game. This one, it was a more even split, and that's kind of what you want to see um, just because of the fact that we do need someone to get those defensive rebounds. And granted, towards the end of the game where the uh, Hawks were just chucking up shots, you know, kind of get back in the game. And they're talented enough to do that. Don't get me wrong. Like, the Hawks are talented enough to where they're a crazy corner shot Three point, three pointer from Trey Young away from really catching on fire and then going off from there. But they, when they were just chucking up shots, um, we couldn't get the rebound. Nick Richards wasn't in the game. It was Mason Plumley, and Mason Plumley just looks lost all the time. Um, and then he had like a turnover where he was trying to back down. I want to say Capella. It might have been. It might have been double O. I don't remember, but he was trying to back it down with somebody, and it was it was a it was a um, charging foul, and it's just like. That you you don't do that at all at all. So you know why are we doing this now? But um, yeah. And let's talk about Dennis Smith Jr. Thirty four minutes. So a guy who one came off injury, two has just not been able to be everything that you know you would thought you thought he would be coming out of North Carolina State when he went to the Mavs. But then granted, they did get Luca like the year after, I believe. But for him to come just come off injury, come off just the few seasons he's had that have not looked good, for him to come in here, do 34 minutes, 18 points, six assists, three steals, one block, I mean two turnovers, whatever. And then guard, you're asking him to guard Trey Young slash DeJounte Murray. I'm not mad at it, man. I'm I'm really not. Like the way Clifford has these guys playing is ridiculous. Uh, like I said, Kelly Oubre, I like that he was able to turn it around. Uh, Kelly Oubre last year, he would just kept chucking up shots, and maybe it would never turn it around. But he literally was able to get to the basket and just try different things to get himself going. Uh, make some, you know, I wouldn't say make necessarily make stops on defense, but just be involved in defense and to kind of ignite his offense, you know. And that that's growth. That that's growth. And like in going to the season, win, loss, draw didn't matter to me. I want to see growth with this team, and that's kind of what we're seeing. And even in guys like Kelly Uber, who you would think that wouldn't, you know, benefit from a guy like Steve Clifford as much just because of the fact that, you know, he may feel like he already has it figured out. But no, Kelly Uber has taken a criticism or taken what they see in film and really has adapted his game to that. And, and it's great to see. And like I said, Gordon Hayward didn't play well, like shooting the ball, but. I mean, five assists, four rebounds. And he was just, he was a good pace changer. He was a good, he was a guy that they got the ball to when they just want to slow things down or the Hawks were going on a run, things like that. They would give the ball to him coming out of timeout. I'm not mad at it. Like Gordon Hayward, him not shooting well is not the end of the world. That's the type of player he is. And like I said, I'm, I, his game on the court, I love everything about it. It's just, you know, stuff, all, you know, him not being able to stay healthy and then kind of just not being as involved. But I mean, overall, this just, just was a great win overall. I mean, they, they held the, the Hawks to shoot 22%, basically 23% from three, 41% from the field. That That is insane. I mean, and for us to shoot 42% from three and 52% from the field is crazy. Uh, I will like the free throw percentage to go up. And granted, a lot of that was because of Mason Plumlee. So I feel as though, I know I've said in the past that um, I have been really frustrated with just you know, how the direction of this team, but I, it, the way the team is playing, it's not necessarily, I think this team is going to be like in the playoffs or playing or anything like that, but it's just the way they're playing, just the energy they're playing with. I owe Mitch Kupchak an apology, man. If they can keep this up, if they can play like this, win, lose, or draw, I owe Mitch Kupchak an apology because he had faith in his team and I didn't. And, I, and, and it was just because it was like, if you couldn't get guys like the team we had last year, if that team, couldn't rise up to the occasion what makes you think this team is going to with 
you know, just the change of coach, the way the change of coach happened, uh, the things with Miles Bridges going on, and just the, you know, just the rumor, the trade rumors, because they're still going on. They're talking about the post that Gordon Hayward liked. I didn't catch him like it. I went to his likes and didn't see it, but I, I don't know if it's true or not. But it's just with all that kind of stuff, with talkers talk, tell them Miller Ball wanting to leave, all these things. How is this team going to rise to the occasion? And Steve Clifford has done just that, you know? And shout out to the players. You know, it's easy to give Steve Clifford the credit, which he deserves a lot. But the players also have done a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, they they are, are the ones that had to listen to Steve Clifford and adjust to what he says. And I think they're doing just that. Um, but anyway, I think this video is ran a, a little long. I'm, you know, I know y'all tired of me sniffling. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully tomorrow I'll feel better and I can do, you know, other videos. Because, you know, I told you I don't want to just do recap videos and things like that. I kind of want to dive in and to see why is Nick Richards playing the way he is now. Because he's just more physical. He's just more active. He just, no, he just looks more comfortable on the floor. He looks like he knows what he's on there to do. And, it, and it's just great to see, you know. Um, it, what, it doesn't look like he's trying to prove himself himself he's playing as if he's arrived you know and that's the best way for me to put it but anyway we can talk more about that later uh thank you guys for just dealing with this video and just also still dealing with how i've started this season kind of lackluster uh you know i started this channel in the middle of the summer and you know i, I had big things planned but me getting sick kind of really messed that up um, just because of the fact that, you know, I was going to try and do like two, three videos a day, but it's also really early in the season. And so I'm trying to watch more and more games and kind of watch more players closely, uh, just so that I can give y'all that analysis that I know y'all really enjoy. But once again, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate everything y'all do, um, as far as supporting me and everything like that. Leave a comment. Cause you know, I respond to all comments as long as it's not like some mellow ball mess. Um, and by mess, I just mean like people are like, oh, this wouldn't happen if jail. I don't want to hear that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.